Yeah, guys, welcome back. And today I don't have one that I'm want to be talking about, or that I'm proud of. I'm angry. I'm upset. The end of E3. Now are you happy? All you damn ignorant, stupid bums that don't know the importance of what E3 does and creates and brings upon the gaming industry just because your broke-ass companies can't afford to come to E3. And in this case, it was not only Sony's fault, it was Nintendo's fault because they started this bull crap. It was their fault. They were the ones who started this bull crap by not showing up. Oh, we'll do it virtually because they weren't having a lot of success at that time until the switch kicked off and they started having success. And then they felt comfortable at where they were, right? To save themselves money because obviously their pockets are not deep enough even though people swear by the Bible that they make so much money. But obviously their pockets are not that deep enough they could afford to come to E3 with no problem, right? It was Nintendo who started this. And then of course, Sony followed too because they were kind of actually going broke as well. So they started saying, oh, you know what? After 2018, when they had the three game showcase with Mr. Flute playing over there, ah, we don't gotta come back. They're gonna follow us because it's whatever we do, people run and follow and that's exactly what happened. Everybody else followed suit. The only ones that were willing to actually give two craps about the gaming industry was Microsoft and some other companies like, let's say, Capcom that were still showing their face there. It's your boy Hebot. Welcome back to another video. And again, Sony destroys and kills something else in the industry because everybody else followed suit. And I get it. Inflation. Times are hard. COVID. All those things play a factor. I get it. But if they would have just kept on trying little by do, little doing it the right way, working together in unison as video game companies, the way Microsoft was willing to do, because Phil said the importance of E3 for him was, was significant. He said this every year. Last year, they were the only ones that were ready to go. And I guess because there weren't enough participants and they couldn't have enough venue space being reserved they had to pull out and not go because of that because there wasn't enough money coming into the ESA which are the ones that run it right if anybody out there tries to say that this is great you are fake just by saying those words for me you're dead as a gamer you're not a real gamer don't come with that you're as casual as casual comes. Gaming is the most important thing in the world right now as far as making money as an entertainment model and business. It's even bigger than movies, which no one would ever have thought they would get to that point, okay? And now our Super Bowl is gone. Football gets to still have their Super Bowl. The NBA keeps to have this, keeps that, let still have their Super Bowl in the NBA championships, right? So can let's say uh, you know uh, a baseball with the World Series. Shit, even co pop cultural things like movies and comic books and video games and mo well, mainly movies, right? And mainly comic books and figures, right? With Comic Con, multiples. So now the only place that's gonna have the beauty of a convention will be the Tokyo Game Show and Germany with, you know, uh, 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 the, the one, I, I forget by the top of my head right now, but the one they host in Germany, <coughs> okay? And that's all we're gonna have to rely on. You guys gotta understand that by having a personal, in-person, on-live convention like this, Companies have no choice but to actually bring quality, quality shows and keynotes to show off their projects and their games, right? Because people are playing their hard-earned money to go to these places and venues. They spend thousands of dollars in some cases just to rent out 
the hotel to stay there for the whole week. And because it's a whole week event, you know, uh, actual event, even though we only see the two keynotes or three keynotes for those three days and that's it, right? It's a whole week event and venue, okay? And shout out to my boy Megatron that he would go and spend a lot of money over there, okay? It's But it's the best way for India, independent developers to showcase their games at a more higher level or higher quality level to be able to get picked up by publishers because they're presenting what they're working on instead of these little videos and trying to break it down as featurettes like they do now on YouTube, okay? It's not as effective because it doesn't reach everybody, at, you know, everybody they want to as well as it should because it's a closed venue, right? And a lot of times when you do these YouTube videos, it's all based on algorithm and not everybody can see them and not everybody going to follow them if they don't know what game it is or what project it is. But all these things play a role. Showing the, the you know, the, the, the uh, you know, preservation of the history of gaming when they bring stuff over, showing the younger audience the history in in person, physically, Co making connections with publishers and developers as smaller, you know, influencers or smaller channels or smaller people that are in the space like us that we want to keep building our channels, doing video game things. You can have actually <coughs> hands on, you know, not only connection, but conversations with these developers where you can make contact, you know, where you can also build relationships to future and better endeavors, right? This will help people like us that are smaller be able to have a voice to get to the level to compete with somebody like an IGN or like a Giant Bomb or a Kotaku because they're the ones that have already an established space. So they're the ones that keep doing the fuckery and the foolishness, doing stupid things and clickbaiting because that's the only way they can get views because they can't do it any other way because they don't have enough talent or real talent to do it the right way, right? By being honest and actually knowing their shit and actually having the passion of a real gamer, okay? So people like us would get opportunity to be able to grow. And meet up with other people from around the world that we talk to and we never really got to connect with unless through, you know, on making it possible through a venue and a venture and, you know, an occasion and gathering like this one. You see what I'm saying? So again, it is an extremely sad day, an extremely sad day. Very, very sad day because... E3's gone. It's leaving. It's officially dead. And who knows how long it'll be before they come to a determination if they ever want to bring it back. Because if there's not enough companies with money to support it and to want to go, right, it's not going to be able to happen. That's why Phil Spencer, Phil Spencer was fighting teeth and nails saying that it was something very important to him and he will always want it and cherish it and, you know, and support it because he, it's good for the industry. It's what is able to expose, you know, certain things to the world because those short pre-recorded videos, I'm sorry, they're not always good. They feel lifeless. There's no real connection. They'll put a fake audience, fake applauding, fake applauding. It's not the same energy when you're live in real life there on a stage talking to everybody and seeing things firsthand, playing the demos firsthand. We can't play the demos when they do a virtual, uh, you know, a virtual, a virtual show. And let's say if they did bring out demos for E3, 
after they did a virtual show, we still can't get the appreciation of those demos because we don't have the developers sitting there next to us talking about the idea, the perspective, what their goal is, what they're trying to achieve to get a better perspective and understanding and respect to the body of work that they're doing. Instead, we got people to come out and the game comes out and it'll literally be a smaller title or something kind of like double A and get no respect because people don't buy it, they don't support it, or, or, or they just think it's garbage, right? E3 creates that, that, that meat, you know, that, 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 what you call it, that door, that open window, that open door, so that we can connect with these developers and know what's going on at a higher quality level, right? At a more personal level, okay? And that is why this is a sad day. Anyone celebrating, like I said, that, oh, this is great, they can save money, or saying stupid things like that, needs to stop, because they create enough programs, they create enough booths, vendors, for them to make money to help whoever goes there and bring in, you know, proceeds. And that is, yes, it's a domino effect. That's why the tickets go up in price. That's why they charge you more and more for stuff like concessions when you buy food. Because that's the way that they're able to maintain the cost to pay for whenever they host something in, a, in, in their venues. And to have all those companies there. That's why they charge the companies more money. So that they can host it and have enough money to pay for the building, for the time there, when people do cosplays. They can host, you know, different um, shows. And that's another thing because cosplayers is always a fun thing to to see in person and be part of. You know, when you see these people put all this hard work and talent into doing these costumes from these games or from whatever's going on or, or you know, whether it's a movie or a comic. Like they do in Comic-Con and E3 as well. And you see them come to life, and it's also really awesome. It's an awesome experience. It's a very fun experience. And I'm speaking to, from, to you from the experience that I had with my own family and friends going to Comic-Con, for example, right? E3 is in the same scope and magnitude, if not bigger, because it's in a bigger space and a bigger, you know, state, right? With a much broader audience, um, as far as uh, gaming, right? Because they, not only people that like gaming go there, but people that like movies and people that like comics because they're all intertwined and connected now. That's why, you know, it's all part of the media and connection, which we all knew this from the very beginning, starting from back in the day, because we saw it. The writing was on the wall. The opportunities, the possibilities, what can you do, what, the approach that could be done once we saw the connections between the, these worlds, right, and two different mediums with writing stories with superheroes and fantasy stories and with, you know, things like video games and creating them. Like, well, you know, would it be awesome to see a really awesome Superman game? For example, giving you an idea of what we're talking about. We knew this. We saw this. The real gamers from way back then. Right, the skies was the limit, and the possibilities were, you know, limitless. So, I'm completely saddened by the news, but unfortunately, it's the reality that we're living in. So, it's just going to get worse, people. If you think it's going to get better, you're absolutely wrong. It's going to get worse because the only players on the field that's going to be able to do anything, keep this alive, this medium, is going to be the big companies, the Fortune 500s like an Xbox or a Microsoft company, or like an Apple, even though they don't really know anything about gaming, or like a Tencent, or like, you know, uh, Embracer, even though they, sh they also don't know anything about gaming. You see what I'm saying? That is why sometimes is be careful what you ask for, or be careful what you wish for, because this is how it starts, how everybody keeps pushing the 
Oh, we only want digital. We only want digital. We only want digital. This is also a reason why things are going down the toilet. You see in hand in hand how, you know, Apple just said they're taking away all the things from people on their phones and and only leaving the streaming service so that you have no way of owning nothing and no way of being able to buy and purchase anything. Because some, per some companies are trying to push you to only be on their streaming services where you don't own anything. And again, as gamers, as enthusiasts of the hobby, as collectors, we want to own what we like and love. We don't want to be dependent on something else that's not reliable when they can take it from us at any given time or any moment in time. So I'm going to try to shorten up the video because you see it's getting darker and darker and I want you to appreciate at least the quality. But again, it's a very sad day. This should not be celebrated. There's a lot of a lot a lot of things that I can touch on that would take way longer, right? On why it's important for E3. Okay? But this is a day that we're not supposed to embrace. Okay? And we get we got to give the thanks to freaking Nintendo and Sony for starting this bull crap because they were broke. Because they couldn't afford to be doing the shows and making enough money to sustain their companies or their divisions. This is why, even in today's day, at them being in a bad situation, they still managed to kill and hurt other companies and other things. The way they did with Sega back in the day. In the in the in the case of Sony, for example. And everybody wants to pander and cater to them. And if you keep just pandering to them and following them. There ain't gonna be nothing left because they don't know how to run the industry. They're 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 garbage as a company. They're garbage. And Nintendo's not perfect either. I'm sorry. You can get mad at me all you want. They're not. They're too stuck in their old ways. And that's why we keep losing shit instead of gaining shit. So again, again, I'm a, I'm a highly upset. Highly fucking upset. But I have to accept the reality of the situation. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you're happy, if you're not, or you don't care. Either way, I'm going to know by what you say if you're worth the time or not. Or if you agree with me. Or if you disagree with me and tell me why. It's good for gaming conversation. I hope you guys are doing well. You know you can find me on any social media platform. And if you want to talk to me specifically or in person... Just hit me up on the DMs on any other social media platform that we talk and we can talk about stuff and work things out. Okay? Or, you know, discuss anything that I, I can help you maybe answer or you may want to know. I'll see you in the next one, guys. It's your boy Hebot signing off. E3 is dead. It's a sad day for gaming and gamers. That was our Super Bowl and it's now taken away. It really is. A, really, really, really is a shame. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.